We are uh, excited to welcome our next guest. He's a former cornerback for the Washington NFL team, Fred Smoot. Fred, welcome to the Eye What's Couple. up, Fred? Hey, what's up, fellas, man? Big fan of you both, man. Thanks for having me on. Man, thank, thank you. you, brother. We appreciate that. And let's get right to it, man. I'm sure you know of the reports about uh, Daniel Snyder and the Redskins, even though Snyder wasn't named in this. Yeah. Are you surprised that that is the culture that is there um, and was there when you were there, or or did you know kind of a lot of this was happening? Well, I can't I can't say it was here when I was here, it, when I was there because at the end of the day, you uh, coaches control that environment, and I played for Joe Gibbs, and, and I'm sorry that Joseph not having it, you know, a man of dignity and and everything has to be the same way. You never heard any of that stuff out when Shanahan was here. So at the end of the day, I. I as I read through it and, and seen everything, and first of all, no woman, no matter what job she works, should have to ever go through anything like that. But right. I also have to look at the, the the big picture of this and say, who was running the ship at the time? I right? and we, and we, under Gruden. This is where most of this stuff is kind of stemming from, from an, under a very loose ran ship. And I have to look at that because I, 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 I was here when Dan was literally on the field every day. He was, he was at the park every day. He was in his office every day. And as I came back to really get into the media and go to, go over there to the field, I noticed he had separated himself and he was, he was actually listening to the fans because, you know, at first he was two hands on and then right. he was like, you need to step back. And now he stepped back and the ship sank and he still get blamed for So like I said before, I, I, I can't say it was a coach under every coach I played for because I, I can say this, Joe Gibbs, Marty Schottenheimer, all those coaches, never before was anything like that happened. Mm. I know a lot of fans, we've had a couple people call into us from uh, D.C. and they uh, basically told me and Chris that we're crazy and that uh, the NFL uh, should make Daniel Schneider uh, sell the team because of this revelation. And, and, and here's the other thing. We get it. He's not a popular guy. Yeah. And, and, and of course, Washington has, has had, hasn't had success underneath him. You remember, I mean, it was unbelievable to me. At one time, there was probably a five- or ten-year waiting list for tickets. And then he took over the team. They were covering up seats because they couldn't sell, sell right. out games in D.C., which was unheard of. You know that. Um, yep, yep. Do you Do you think this with him not even being named as somebody who actually took part in this stuff, do you think he'll be forced to sell by the league? You know what? It's been such a build-up, guys, for the last eight days since the Washington Post release. We're finna right. drop bums. We're finna drop bombshells. So it's been right. speculation after speculation. And me, myself, I, I've been a part of things. I'm like, let me sit, let me wait, let me see the facts. And, and yes, sometimes I do see a semi-mutiny because Dan is not the most popular guy. And for me to know him personally, the one thing that I think works against Dan that people don't know is he's shy. If you notice, he never likes to get in front of the camera. He never likes to talk. There's never been who he is. And I think to a fault that hurts him with the fan base because they can't identify with him. They can't. They don't know his emotion. They don't know who he is. So, yes, of course, mix that with the fact that the, that the team hasn't won in years, it makes still want to run him out of town. But then I also, I have to look at a second level stuff. I like to investigate. If I'm going to do some investigation, I like to work a little bit. Now, you know, the Washington Post is owned by Bayos, right? Bayos is a guy that wants in on the NFL. He wants in on the team. You know, I, I have to really look at it and say, if billionaires was trying to one-up each other, make something happen, how would they do it? They would do it through the companies they own. So, you know, when I look at it and I look at the big picture, like I said before, no woman should ever have to go through that. And I think it's all still from whatever head coach was there at that time because the head coach sets the tempo in, in that whole building. Even with, a, yeah, we, with, these are some guys from the front office. Larry Michael, you, I guess you're, are you surprised that he was, you know, he's yeah, a voice bro, of the Reds long time for 16 years. And, and an older guy, you surprised that he was caught up in this? Uh man, you know, I'm anytime you see anybody names that you actually know these guys, right. you are you you're surprised, you know, cuz you like, you know, I, I didn't think, you know, they would do that stuff and I want to hear the whole story and see what really went on. I Nothing surprises me anymore. 2020 has stopped me from being surprised from anything. Anything <laughs> right, can happen right. at any time. So when these stories come out, the first thing I want to do is get my facts. These names were brought up, and the only commonality with these names is they've been there 10 plus years. And that's pretty much with every name that's been there. Now, when these, when these things happen, I, I don't really know. But like I said, nothing surprises me anymore. 
Hey, hey, Fred, what about, and you say nothing surprises you, the idea that uh, when advertisers came to the Washington franchise and said that name is changing or we're taking our, pulling our money out of the organization, and in, le- in about two weeks, uh, what people have been trying to do for decades, the name of the team, which is yep. by most definitions a racial slur, is going to be gone did you think of when you played there? Did you ever think about uh, that it was a racial slur? And how shocked are you that finally it is going to get changed? I've, I've told this uh, this story on a couple of interviews. I, I I seen it my my rookie year preseason. I never forget it. We pulled up on the team bus. We pulled up to the Kansas City uh, stadium. I'm sitting there, me and Champ Bailey talking, and I see a, a, a small group of boycotters. And I, I was like, what are they boycotting? What happened? He was like, man, sometimes they boycott because of the name. Everybody doesn't like the name. And just in the back of my head, I kind of cataloged it and said, you know, one day we're going to we're gonna have to take this on head first. Now, this day coming this quick, you got to realize the discussion started up again three weeks ago, and we are already to the point that it's, a, it's about to change. The name. So me, myself, if it's financially motivated, if it's uh, motivated because in your heart that's what you want, I don't really care. As long as the change happens. I, I, I've talked to a couple of Native Americans, just did a town hall on, on the news with a Native American, just hearing how he talked about it, how it made them feel. I never knew that when I was playing. I was so engulfed in just being in the NFL and living a dream that I wasn't even thinking on that level at the time. But now just listening to him, yes, if it offends one of them, if it offends a group of them, the name should be changed. And I'm fine. So I'm not one of the people that cry when problems happen. I'm from Mississippi. I've, I've been through it all and I've seen it all. I'm one of those people. I like to fix the problem and that's why I started my Red Wolves movement so they can have we can have a name we can be proud of and move forward with. Now what is that name? The Red the Wolves. Red, the Red Wolves. It's the, it's the number one surging name in the last five days. It went from not even on the list to the top of the list. I think everybody seem to like it because it does a couple things. First of all, the Red Wolf is indigenous to this this area. Okay. It's, it's, it's about to go extinct. I right? it's literally in this area. I think less than fifty of them left. Wow. All right? It also has a tie to the Native American with, with the with the wolf being the spirit animal. It also has ties to a neighbor brigade that was called the Red Wolf Squadron. So there go your military connection. It also lets you keep the H T T R held to the Red Wolves. It allows you to keep your same burgundy and gold. It allows you to basically transform from a native to a wolf, to a werewolf. I think it's fun. I think the fan base will love it. And like I told them, just imagine, man, Haskins dropping back, throwing an 80-yard pass to McLaurin, and, and 80,000 just howling like wolves. Uh, much <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hey, I like man, that. You make a Ooh, nice argument for it. I'll tell the, you that the it's Red hard. Wolves. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard, hard not to go. Well, with and, it and, after and you that, know what? If you speech. don't, if you if you can't get it to the Red Wolves, we could always because today is a TV theme song Thursday on the show. Maybe they could change the name to the Red Foxes. No. <laughs> uh, Red Fox is Red Fox is just not it, it's not intimidating. A wolf is intimidating. And, 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 Fred, and I, I gotta that. tell you, Rob thinks he's a comedian, so I, Red that, Fox that I, I know up, that. I you know, know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Ross, much, Fred. Fred, hey, great stuff. I enjoy Rob. We got to get him back. Got to get you He's back good. on, Fred. No good. doubt and about I'm it. I'm telling you, I'm with the uh, Red Wolves after that speech. What's hey, not listen, to hey, like? Listen to me. When you pick the name, Chris, you can't just pick a name. You have to pick something that the fans can actually evolve in, and that it could be a part of their game, their experience. Imagine if we pick the Red Wolves and we build that new stadium, and we actually make it a pet-friendly stadium so people can bring their dog. When we start howling, those dogs are going to start howling. Well, now, I, I, I don't, don't know saying, about all that. You bringing the dogs, <laughs> too? <laughs> it's 2020. <laughs> I don't know about all that, Fred. I think you went a little too far on that We love the Red Wolves. Thank you, Fred. (laughs) All right, Fred. We'll get you on again, though, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, fellas.